Hi, this is Lou. Welcome to my channel. And today I've got another line and wash video. So I put one up earlier this week and uh, yeah, it, a lot of you seem to really enjoy it. So I thought I'd do another one. Um, I've been out uh, around Edinburgh, which is where I live, and I've been taking some photos. And this is a photo in Stockbridge, which is kind of next to the new town in Edinburgh. And it's full of these beautiful, like, very grand buildings. And I really like this one. It's got some shops at the bottom. So there's a little red awning there. And underneath the red awning is a little cafe called Patisserie Florentine. It's one of my favourite places to go. Um, it's dog friendly, so I can take my little dog. You can sit inside or outside and they do the most amazing French pastries. So I really recommend that one. Um, so I thought I'd do a little sketch of the building that it's in. So I've started by uh, using pencil to get the, the the vague shapes in there because I'm really not very good at kind of judging proportion straight off. So at some point I'll I'll try and ditch the pencil and and be a little bit freer and try and do the uh, the sketch straight with a pen and not be too precious about it. Uh, but for now, I quite like to use the pencil, especially when the building is quite regular. Um, and it, it's really obvious if you get some of your windows a little bit off. And I don't mind a few wobbly lines or that um, kind of... Yeah, I want a hand-drawn quality to it, but I like to kind of get the framework in first. So I'm using a Unipin pen today. Uh, it's a 0 0.2 and I'm just going around the big shapes, the windows, um, the roof line, and then I'm going to start putting the awning and the shop details in. I'm going to try and get the big shapes in first and then kind of go back over everything and add in some detail. And I'm using the pen to kind of correct some of my pencil lines where I think they're a bit off. So I don't need to fix everything in pencil first. Um, but if I realise that the pencil line's a bit off, then I can just use the pen to put in the correct line. Then I'm spending a little bit of time just trying to get the pillars and the shop front in and the windows in the right place. Although they're all really quite dark, it's, it's actually quite difficult to see what's going on there. Um, but I want to get, you know, the basic shapes in, the basic framework in. And then the door lines up the windows above it. And now I'm starting to put some of the detail in. Now I've got the, the windows in and like the, most of the rest of the building in and the kind of the basic shapes for where the doors and windows are. I can go in and start putting in um, some details. And I always, always forget chimney pots, so I'm going to try and put them in now so I don't forget. So I'll put the chimney stacks in and then you can just see a couple of little pots on the top. So I keep trying different ways of doing windows. And windows in Edinburgh are usually sash and case ones. So while I decide what I'm doing, I put in the, the halfway lines because uh, I know I'm going to want those. And then I get distracted and start filling in little details of the cafe. So I'm putting in the chairs and tables in front of the, uh, in front of the windows. 
I had a decision to make about whether to put the people in, but I decided just to put the empty chairs and tables in instead. So then I keep going, adding in bits of the shop details down there. The, this shop is Aesop and it sells really kind of luxury hand creams and um, soaps and things like that. So now I decide to get rid of my pencil lines because they're getting a little bit distracting. And also I definitely want to get rid of them before I put any watercolour in. Uh, so I'm going to take them away now. And then I'm starting to put in just the steps in front of the shops and then a couple of lines to indicate where the pavement is. And I decide to put in a few of the paving stones as well, just to just to give it that area of a bit of interest. This building's on a slope, so the building is kind of straight, but the pavement slopes upward slightly. And then I've decided what I'm going to do with the windows. So I draw the frames in, and then just little crosses in the middle for the the little bars in the window. Sometimes I draw each of the panes in separately and then fill them in, uh, but for this one I decided that's what I was going to do. I think drawing the kind of the window frames in and having that double line there gives the windows a little bit more presence, so I like doing that. One thing I want to try and do is get that sense of the window frames being white. Um, so I'm going to try and, when I add the colour, I'm going to try and leave a little bit of white space. But it's very, very thin and very tiny. So I'm not sure how or whether I'm going to be able to manage that. Uh, at some point I might experiment with going in again with a white pen on top and adding those things back in. Uh, not for this one. Now I get to do the fun bit. It's the bit I really like, which is kind of noticing all the little details on the building and, and putting them in. So this row of windows here uh, on the second floor is uh, taller than the others and they've got little balconies beneath them so I wanted to get those in. And then on this building the stonework on that kind of first floor is really quite distinctive and it's part of what gives the building its look so I want to put this in. I don't normally put in every brick or every stone uh, but I thought for this building it kind of it made the look of it so I wanted to get that in so I started with those angled stones above the windows and then uh, created the brick, it's not brickwork, the stonework around the windows on that level. And then I am denied about what to do with the upper two stories. Did I just leave them like plain? I decided that there was a really obvious line um, along the kind of the top row of windows, so I'd put that in like a 
like a, a little line of stone sticking out a bit. So I put that in and then and then I did decide to put in some like indications of some of the other stonework as well, um, particularly above and below each of the windows. And then a few lines here and there just to indicate the rest of the stonework. But then nothing as obvious as on the uh, the first floor because I really wanted that to, to stand out the way it does on the actual building. And then I'm looking at the building and seeing what else has it got that I, you know, I want to put on it. And there are things that I really like on buildings. I don't know why. I really like drain pipes. I really like little wires, TV aerials, burglar alarms, all those kind of little details. I think that when you add those into a drawing, it uh, just makes it look more, I don't know, makes it look more interesting, more real. So now it's time to add some colour. Um, I'm starting with the, the stonework and I'm trying to mix up a decent colour for the stone. So I'm starting with the yellow ochre, but I think it's a bit too bright. So I'm adding a little bit of purple into the yellow and that just tones it down a bit, makes it a little bit more muddy. So I'm quite happy with that colour as a match for the, for the stonework. I'll be muddying it down further when I add in some shadows and some kind of dirtier areas, but as a kind of a basis uh, for everything, then I think it's fine. And once I've filled in the whole area, I add in a little bit more pigment in areas that I think are a little bit darker on the building, just to make it look not so uniform and even. And then I think the pavement is a very similar colour to the stonework, so I use the same colour for that and just add in a little bit of a muddy colour from my palette to dirty it down a bit to put in the road colour. The next thing I want to get in is that red awning. I want that to be nice and bright. So add in a bit more color for that. And then I'm mixing up like a really kind of deep slaty blue. It's mainly indigo. Uh, it's got a little bit of, a little bit of green, a little bit brown in it. And then I want a kind of creamy colour for the uh, cafe front. You'll see that my red awning wasn't quite dry. So uh, as I put that creamy colour in beneath it, it's bled into the awning a little bit. So I'll go back and fix that a bit later on. Now I've mixed up a kind of a mid grey colour, a little bit of blue, a little bit brown and I'm painting in the windows, just dotting in the colour. I can see that the windows lower down the building are a bit darker, so I've put a little bit more pigment in there. And then I'm using a clean, dry brush just to blend those colours a little bit to stop kind of getting harsh lines in the windows. I want it to look like some of them are reflecting the light and some of them are darker, so you can see more into the room. And then I do the same with the windows on the shop front. Now that colour's all dry, I can go back in and fix the awning a little bit. Although it wouldn't have been the end of the world if I'd left it with a little run in it. 
I keep wanting that shop front on the left to be darker, so I keep adding more layers of colour onto it. And I use a lighter wash of some of my slaty blue to dirty up some areas of the building that um, either are dirty because of the stonework or are in shadow. And then I go around and add in some areas of shadows under each of the windows, under the awning and under the doors. Decide some of my windows need to be a little bit darker in places, just to give that impression of some of the window panes reflecting light and others not. And I keep going in with this grey-blue colour to add in more areas of shadow. But I decide that what it really needs is uh, it needs a little bit more pen work, so when the colours are all dry, I'm going back in with a fine liner pen and just putting in some areas that are really going to be more in shadow, so under each of the windows. And uh, on the shop front, down at the bottom, under each of the doors, and in uh, some of the window areas as well. And I decide that I want the doors to be black, so I decide to kind of hatch them in and colour them in but I think that was maybe a little bit too far. I think I maybe went a bit overboard with that. So here's my final sketch of this building in Edinburgh. I hope that you enjoyed this. I'll put a link to my original photo down below so that if you want to uh, draw and paint along with me, then you can do that. So thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in another video very, very soon. Bye bye.